Hey guys, this is Justin of Crow Graphics, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how I created a realistic coin using both Photoshop and Cinema 4D. <laughs> Alrighty, so what I was able to do was I was able to combine the elements of Photoshop and Cinema 4D and I did use another program called Shader Map Pro. And what I was able to do was I was able to, to uh, create a very realistic coin using all three of those plug well programs. And I'm gonna show you guys how I did it. So first thing I had to do was I was in Photoshop and I needed to create a coin as for a texture. And now what was the cool thing was is I was able to just download this as it was and then just kind of like fill in the rest. So this was basically like a template so to speak and what I'll do for you guys is I'll include the coin PSD and also the Cinema 4D project file in the description so that way you guys can take a look at it and uh, come up with their own ideas, so to speak. So just kind of like going through the texture on here. Uh, let me just take out some layers real quick. And take out the texture. This is essentially like the color of it, which is, uh, it's already pre-made, which is good. I'm currently using uh, the gold coin, but I also have uh, silver as well. In which if you want to make a silver coin, you can do that. But uh, one of the main things when it came to it was uh, just making sure that your coin looks somewhat realistic or just flat out realistic in Photoshop. Because if you get it to look realistic in Photoshop, once you bring it over to Cinema 4D, then all you're doing there is just messing around with some parameters as far as reflection, speckler, and things like that and some lighting to really sell it. So uh, just kind of like going through, that's not what I wanted, let's see here. So this is how the template is and then I was able to add some other elements and what I did with those elements was if I take the effects off, whoops, one second, let me turn that fill on and turn the effects off. Basically what we got going on here, let me zoom in just a little bit, whoops, take that off, is basically it's kind of like just a flat texture so to speak. And uh, all we're doing when we want to add our custom bevels is we are just taking whatever we want in this, we're turning the fill down, and then we're going into our uh, effects, and, and which let me turn those on. We're in our effects and we're just adding bevel and emboss. Now you can add contour if you want, it really doesn't matter too much. But yeah, I'm adding bevel and boss. I'm adding a drop shadow because that's going to help sell the shadows that it's naturally going to create when we bring it in. And then I added this uh, satin kind of feel so that way it doesn't look so bland. Like it gives you uh, a little extra to the texture. And let's see, where is that other thing at? I did the same thing with the little round bevels in which on this one I just got the bevel and the bevel emboss and the shadow. And then lastly, I should have his, okay there it is right there, it's in a group. I got his logo and which what I did was I'm just gonna unhide the, well hide those. And so what we have here, I'm going to increase that fill, is it's literally just, it's like a vector, and that's it, like just a black vector. And you turn the fill down, and then you just add the effects, in which, I'll, I'll just leave these up here for a second, and then you can kind of like pause and uh, get these down. And again, these are going to be all in the, in the project file. But if you want to kind of like recreate it on your own, then I'll definitely just leave these for you. And it's really uh, the embosses that's really going to sell the beveled look. 
and I'll show you how we do that in a second. So what I did with uh, his logo is I did that effect twice, but just uh, some different settings. So let's say for example, I do uh, turn the fill up and I turn the effects off. As you can see, this is just his logo, just uh, like a double T, so to speak. And then with the effects, as far as the bevel emboss goes, uh, one of them has uh, an outer bevel and chisel hard. And then with the next one that I have stacked right on top of it, I got an inner bevel and a chisel soft. So what I'm doing is I'm basically double beveling his logo and that allows me to get a realistic look whenever I bring it into Cinema 4D. However, before I can do that, let me go ahead and just turn all these off. As far as their fill opacity goes, let's zoom it out, maybe about 25%. So this is our coin right here, essentially. This is the main texture for it. So are we going to bring it like this into Cinema 4D? No, not exactly. I, I mean, we can as, you know, just the main thing. However, if you want to get the bevels, we're going to have to uh, save these bevels out differently. So what we're going to do is we are going to uh, take off our gold color. And then we're going to take off our textures. And then what I will do after that is I'm just going to create a new layer. And I'm just going to go for a very in-between gray. So that way we don't get any accenting or anything like that when we bring it into Shader Map Pro. So this is what is going to be basically our bump map right here. So we save this out and we bring this right into Cinema 4D and I'll go ahead and show you guys that. I do believe this is the texture for, nope, that's for the back. This is for the T. So let's go into our bump and that's exactly what we're using for it. Is there any way I can make that larger? Uh, it doesn't look like it. Oh well. Yeah, so this image is going to be the exact copy of this one right here that we use for our bump. And basically what the bump map is doing is it's looking for all of the black and white areas and it's kind of like within its algorithm just kind of like choosing where to apply the bump at. But once we have this saved out in which I'm gonna go ahead and uh, you know what, I do believe I have a copy of this already. In fact, I do, yeah. That's what I got. So what we'll do now is we're going to open up Shader Map Pro. And the beauty of this program is you can literally drag any file in it and it will give you a displacement, a normal map, ambient occlusion, specular, whatever have you for it. So we're just going to go ahead and just drag that in there and we're just going to keep it as diffuse and we're going to hit OK and we're going to let, let it do its thing here. So right now it's currently generating what we need for it. And so this is our texture, so to speak, when it comes to uh, what we're going to be using for our bumps and also for our speckler. And as you can see, let's see if I can get a good zoom in here. As I move this light here, you can see how it's affecting where it's bumping at, so to speak. And that's going to be what plays a role into our coin. Because the more dynamic uh, lighting that we have for it and the better that light looks, like that looks really nice right there. It, the better of a coin that it's going to present off, so to speak. So we're already getting that uh, metallic feel just by messing around with the lighting. And we haven't even really brought this in the Cinema 4D yet. 
so then what we would do is we would go ahead and create our specular map we would create our ambient occlusion and we'll also create our normal map now for the displacement all i did was for that is i just took uh the dirt texture that's in here in which let me just go ahead and hide all these and i'll show you what that is so we're on a uh, blank slate so basically all i did was i just took this dirt texture and saved it out so that way i can get this right here and i just brought that into shader map pro and which i'll show you what that guy what that looks like and I think I might have gotten the speckler off of it. Possibly. I think I might have. Uh, do not save changes. But we'll go through uh, the texture importing and things like that in Cinema 4D. So as you can see here, we can see how our speckler really affects uh kind of like the little bumps and little yeah the little lighting bumps in it and how uh i think we also got some displacement in here as well but that's what i did for uh that and also i use this as kind of like a something to make the coin look a little rough so now let's hop into uh cinema 4d and let's kind of like uh, just go through the textures real quick. So I'm going to unselect all those. And this is what I have. Basically, it is a layer. And remember earlier, I was showing you basically what our texture was. This is what it came out to be. I just went ahead and just saved it out as like a clean coin looking thing. And then I added the dirt onto it as an overlay. And then uh, I did another dirt picture, except on a white background this time. And in fact, I'll go ahead and uh, show you that. So I got that dirt on there. And then I have this one on there, kind of like just doubling up the dirt texture on there. So that way you get a really gritty looking coin, like it's been uh, worn off a little bit. And I got the dirt on white on multiply and then the dirt which is on the grayish background on overlay. Then I'll go on down to uh, diffusion. What I'm using this for is I'm using it for natural ambient occlusion. And uh, again I'm going to have all these files within the project folder so that way you can take a look at them. And uh, the main thing uh, when you go to do this is just remove the bitmap right here and then just replace it with what you want it to be. In which case, I do believe I used the, dis the displacement when uh, I was using it for the diffusion, I do believe. Uh, let's go back and uh, take a look. Let's see what I get. Put that in OK, hit no to that. Uh, not displacement. Let's see here. Oh, it does give me an ambient inclusion map. Yeah, so basically, uh, you just use the ambient inclusion map and just make sure you generate that out and bring it in and just load it right in here. So next thing after that, of course, is going to be our reflection because what coin doesn't have some reflection to it? And as far as uh, parameters go for this, very straightforward. Basically, I got a filter in which, let me open up those properties. And I got this metal grunge texture, which is going to affect the reflection of it. And then I got a gradient going from this like slightly golden color to a white. And brightness and mixed strength levels those are all toned down to taste and then i got the blurriness at five percent so then here it comes what really makes it is we got the bumps and as you can see right in here already where it's flat and then it's giving us like some simulated shadows right here on where it's bumping at and i got this at 28 percent and then from that same uh, 
from Shader Map Pro, I created the normal map as well. And again, this is all coming from the bevel and embossed image that I uh, made out of Photoshop. So we turn that on, and as you can see now in here, it's really looking like it's popping out, which is exactly what we want because that's how bevels work. They pop out and they also go in. And that's what's going to uh, work very well with our uh, our lighting. And so after that, we of course have our specular, which now we just made this thing look really, really good in our preview. And this is going to be how it looks like when uh, we render it. And again, this is on a layer texture. And so what I did was I did get the specular map from the dirt in which I have that at an add, same with the Loomis. And with the Loomis, uh, it's an effect uh, pre-built already into a Cinema 4D, in which you just go to like shader, and then you go to uh, Loomis. And what I have is, I have one that's a streak, just going straight down. And then also, I have another one, but I'm not too, yeah, for some reason it doesn't, ah, how about that? And then I got it where it's also coming like off the side and going down right through the middle except at an angle. And then of course I uh, have that on white, have that on normal, 100% mixed strength. And here's where things really come into the picture is I have the mode set to metal. Which is why my metal textures look the way that they do. And I have these parameters set up to where I can control the intensity and also how much I get th throughout the coin itself. So if I also like have this on plastic, as you see, that looks like really weird right there. Like, I, I don't really know how to describe it. It looks like a fake metal to me. So we just put that on metal and that kind of like really contrast out the texture. And then last but not least, we have our displacement. And uh, since I was going in for some really, really close shots of the coin, I didn't need anything drastic in which for a coin, you definitely don't. So I got a 0.25 centimeters for the height, 53% uh, uh, for the strength. And what's really going to make or break your uh, subdivisions when you're doing displacement is uh, if you have sub polygon uh, displacement on or not. If you don't, I'm telling you guys it's going to look like crap. But you check that and then you can control how much uh, subdivision level that you want. I always set mine to about three or four. But one thing to keep in mind is when you're using displacement, you're going to want to make sure that your model or wherever you are doing your displace displacement is very much subdivided as you see right here where it's just nothing but crazy subdivisions because think of these as like pixels so to speak and the more pixels that you have to work with the more pixels you have within a certain area the better of a picture you're going to get and this is pretty much the same concept here so that's what I did for uh, the coin. I did one for this side, and then I did another one for the other side as well. I just uh, used a different image for the back, and uh, I did some more uh, embevel bevels and bosses, like for the date. Uh, that's pretty much the same concept. And then just for the side, uh, I just used a uh, texture that I got from. Uh, uh, I can't even think of the name of it to save my life. Oh yeah, Video Code Pilots uh, Pro Shaders. I use that for this side of the coin. And what I didn't do, I don't know why I didn't do this earlier, was when I was making this, I didn't bother to even export a UV map to uh, just map all this on in like a 4K texture and then go from there. So what I had to do was I had to mess around with the offset of the texture to get everything to line up the way that it should. Like, for example, if I set all of this to like 100%, 100%, and then, uh, whoops, probably in the wrong mode to do that. And 
which uh must be affecting yeah there it is and then i set that to like uh zero and then zero that is essentially my texture right there on a model and which of course i mean yeah it looks great but we need to expand this quite a lot enough to uh fit the back of the coin so i would highly recommend uh exporting out a uv map and then uh, apply the textures onto it that way it'll make your life a lot easier when you don't have to mess with these parameters but in case if you do then just uh get it to fit first and then line it up and that's the main thing that you want to be uh, aware of and then uh, last but not least, as far as what the coin goes, you want to make sure that you have very good lighting. In which, in my case, I go with my normal setup. I have a sky for, uh, for my uh, global illumination. In which I always crank up the strength of the illumination from the texture a bit. And then I got four spotlights, of course. I'm not too sure if these are emitting caustics or not, and of course they are. Four spotlights, and then I got uh, 14 lights that are going right around it, very up close. And so what this is able to do is I'm able to get a very dynamic lit texture right here. And again, I'm pretty much like cheating my way through, but it's yielding fantastic results. And then when I bring it into like post-processing and After Effects, it just really sells the effect after I color correct it at uh, depth of field and things of that nature. And sometimes uh, in my animations, I will animate these lights. Like I'll have these kind of like spin around and as you can see, it really messes uh, and kind of gives you uh, how, how to explain it. Uh, like a dynamic uh, light going on to where it doesn't look so bland but then again also camera movement will take care of a lot of that for you so this is how I made that uh, very realistic coin for my buddy Tainted Terror uh, he is a twitch streamer just got partnered so congrats to him and uh, yeah that's pretty much it so I will see you guys in the next tutorial, so y'all take care.